Natural versus assisted. What's it really like? As someone that spent nearly 10 years on anabolics competing in bodybuilding, I feel like I'm now in a good enough position to answer that question. I cycled off steroids completely cold turkey last year. No PCT, nothing. The recovery process for about a month was grim. I'm sure we'll come onto that in another video very soon, but 12 months in and how am I feeling? Mentally and physically, I feel fantastic. Training enjoyment is the highest it's been for some time. The only glaring issues I say being natural compared to assisted are performance and recovery. I definitely notice a lot more the impact of being out of routine has on the above. An hour or two of sleep less, alcohol in the system, too much time on my phone in bed, not prioritizing stretching, mobility, foam rolling, using the massage gun, Epsom salt baths. All these things I feel can potentially negate progression in the gym. Could this, however, all be psychological? Am I placing too much emphasis on the need to do the above or do they actually provide that much of a large percentage increase in performance and recovery? Only time will tell. Maybe I can ditch the lavender bed sheet spray and memory foam pillow and whack on some David Goggins instead. They don't know me, son! It's not very nervous, I get. Not very nervous. Not very often I get nervous before a lift. I really want to smack a four plate. A, a four plate hack. I feel like you get like this during training. Sometimes, like, certain. Is it not a landmark? Certain, like, uh, milestones. A bit like, right, this has got to be a big session today. So when I know that, like yesterday, good day of recovery, had a social event, didn't drink, had a good night's sleep, I'm back on the whoop. See that, look, I'm giving the whoop another go. I've got the moss, the, the, it's like a really dark green, I like it. So I'll be doing a video about this very, very soon, but looking forward to giving it another shot. I was too impatient last time with the whoop, and I do apologise, it's not good of me, not like me. But uh, Whoop, Garmin Phoenix 6, the two, will be, two, the two will be used. It's 10 to 1. We're going to make this pre-workout. We have chest, quads and triceps today. We're incline pressing. We're hacking. It's going to be a big one. What do we need for a big session? Had our MV Pre, 8 grams with 5 grams of creatine. Intra, supplement needs, electrolytes, and supplement needs, EAA. Headphones for music, we have our AirPods Pro, big investment in this. I use them for my editing at work, and I also use them to training, fantastic. As we are incline pressing, these aren't to use, as in to press, they're to put underneath the arms of the machine, to put us in a slightly more favorable position to press. The 1MR, very, very sturdy this. Could also use like clips, you know how you get the clips for the bar. I'll just use the D handles. Knee sleeves and reverse band. Although I've been using the orange band at Muscleworks, which is the same tension, but just on the off chance they don't have it, we'll take it. Sorry for the loud noises, we've got the uh, iner inertia crew in today. It's like the slam the weight from A to B, you know? Time under tension, zero. Uh. A. A. Little biscuit plates on today. 70 last week, we'll go 72 and a half. A 1.25 key plates aside. Let's go, Tommy boy. Full house again today, lad. Oh. 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 Five for six. Last week, sixty-two point five for eight. So we'll we'll go. We'll try sixty-five. And we'll try push for six, seven reps. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. Oh. This is when the real work begins. It's been a good like 10 or so minutes warming the knees up for when we're doing Cybex hacks. I've only got two quad movements for this session, Cybex hack and then a, a banded leg press, as opposed to the leg extension, a leg press and a split squat. So uh, plenty of knee mobility work, mobility work. A few Ukrainian wall sits as we like to call them. I feel like the no band warm up is like a psychological, is like a really positive psychological trick. Like warm up as many sets as possible without a band, chuck a band in. Your hack squat session will always uh, be dictated how, there you go, a single plate moves. And that feels really heavy, so great. Oh, I got 77.5 for seven last week. I don't. That's 75. Ay, ay, ay. Don't think the four places on today, lads. Let's take 77.5 for a spin and then we'll see. Oh. Easy press. Oh. It's all in the fucking. Let's get this. I had to stop at four there. I thought everything was gonna snap. I thought my knee was gonna go, I thought my hip was gonna go. We'll take the four. Sometimes it's important just to touch your weight, you know? We did this a lot during our off season. Got ahead of ourselves a little bit, in particular on that Cybex incline press. I remember doing that with Josh and Joe. One week I might take the piss a little bit with, with the load, but the following week it allows me to kind of jump up a little bit more, so. We'll take the four plates for four. We'll try and get four plates for six next week. Back off on this last week was 65 for eight. So three plates and a five. And um, I've got a rep scheme of about eight to 10. Did you get seen quite quick in hospital? Yeah, I had seven hours in A&E on that Friday. Seven hours, yeah. Fucking terrible, innit? <laughs> it's mental. See you later, mate. Take care. Yeah, 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 sweet. I actually need you. I needed him this week. Right, some cues on here. Dual rope or head over to 1MR.shop and get yourself a long one like this. The reason why we don't do a, a, a regular short rope is like, this is my, this is my hand positioning now on a, if it was like a short rope, yeah? If I'm trying to, it, it's very restrictive and it's causing that internal rotation in the shoulder. So either a long rope or get two short ones together and stick them on the top like so. Good cue for people when they are doing dual is get those shoulders into retraction and then hinge and then go into your extension like so. See how the, the length of this long rope is allowing me to drive my arms out 
in that natural path of where the triceps want to go, as opposed to being in here and doing all this shit and boom, boom, squeeze out. This may be a little higher as well. I'm used to doing one the other one. I should go on the other one, really. That's a little bit higher. Usually, I kind of extend from here. JM press to finish. I've made a few different tweaks to this movement. So, just one nudge on the incline, and I'm further down. So, the bar is almost like touching my forehead, as opposed to like crushing my face like last time. And that just was a lot better, a lot easier on the uh, elbows as well. It's quite hard to cue. I said this last week, like for clients trying to cue a JM press. It's tricky, but it's almost like imagining you're doing like a tricep V bar push down, but just while on your back. It took me a while to get used to it. it. Took me like a couple of weeks, but turned to be one of my favorite tricep movements. Oh. Cut. Ow. Right, that's us done. All the battery lights flashing. Now I'm going to wrap the video up. Training versus training on steroids versus off them. Fucking horrible. Take gear, die young. No, I'm joking, don't do that. I actually feel really good off gear at the moment. I think we're coming up to close to a year off as well. September time, I think I come off, did that, started the high rocks training. So we'll do a video one year on. But uh, yeah, as you saw today. Toughy, tough one. First day on the whoop, the whoop's gonna like that with a strain in it. Anyway, good sesh. Dug it out. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, good night, much love.